Right. So, part A. In order to do this, in order to prove that we satisfy this differential equation, what are we going to have to do? What do we do? To get from a function to its derivative, we're going to have to differentiate, right? To, to differentiate, yeah, yeah, it's okay, that's why I'm not you. Differentiate will get us to a differential equation. So I'm going to say if t really was this, if t was 20 plus 80 is kt. Let's take Arian's suggestion here, there's no reason why it doesn't work. If I subtract 20 from both sides, t minus 20, I end up with this. Okay. Now, we might as well do it with this. If I differentiate the left hand side, as it is right now, what happens to that negative 20? What happens when you differentiate a constant? It becomes nothing. It becomes nothing, you can disregard it. So this guy's going to go, when I differentiate this, with respect to time, I'm just going to get dt on dt. Is that okay? Differentiate that right hand side for me. That 80 is just going to hang around. What's going to happen when you do the inside derivative of that exponential function? What's the inside derivative? Negative k. Negative k. Negative and k. And then, of course, when you differentiate an exponential, now on the outside function, nothing happens. So it just hangs around and does that. So, when you have a look at this, that 80e to the minus kt is what I had on the previous slide. Let me just make that a little clearer by factorizing out the negative k, like so. And as per Aaron's suggestion, I have now, that's the t minus 20 that I saw before. Minus kt minus 20, Dunskys. I have shown it satisfies the given differential equation. You happy with that so far? So you differentiate it, it looks good. Now, we want to use it. Okay. Now, you remember in the original question, you got given all of these conditions, these pieces of information here, right? So what we want to do is use them in some way to help us get to part B. How do you think I'm going to use this fact here? After five minutes, your cup of coffee or whatever thing you were boiling is now 70 degrees. And you want to suggest Yeah, so the, the exercise, thank you Erica, the exercise you've just been doing has said find the growth rate, find out what k is, right, and it will involve some weirdo logs and that kind of thing, because if you don't know what k is, you don't know how fast it's cooling down, right, but this piece of information can help you identify how fast it's cooling down, right, so where am I going to put this into? Which equation? I've got lots of equations to choose from. Which one? Yeah, I think the first one is a good choice because it's got the temperature and it's got a time in it. Okay? So I'm going to say, let's move this down a little bit. <coughs> uh, if I take this equation here, I'm going to substitute 70 into the temperature and 5 into the time. Can you go ahead and do that and then try and work out what k is? Can you get an answer for k? I'll give you some time to do it while I do it on the board as well. There's some thinking music for you. this exact thing written down the way in the form that I've written it in, you might, for example, have written it minus a fifth log 5 over 8. And that's the same thing. Let me write it down there just so you can see. Why is it that these two things are the same? What have I done? Yeah, so I've used the power law when you're working with logs. If you've got a number at the front, 
you can make it the power of what you're taking a log of, right? So I've, in, I've opted to instead of writing a negative sign out here, I've put that in as a this to the power of negative one, which of course is a reciprocal. Okay. Now, do you have to do that? No, you don't. Um, why do I do it? Two reasons. Number one. Um, I don't like negative signs, so I try and get rid of them as quickly as I can. Have you, how quickly have you already noticed that negative signs are the cause of like half of your problems? Okay, you're like, I, everything was fine, why is my answer completely different? It is great. Answer, you forgot a negative that was there. Okay. Um, secondly, I like that it helps me, like I want to write this in the simplest form that I can. And this negative really is unnecessary. Uh, thirdly, I'm just using log laws. I like to use log laws to remind me of what the log laws are. And you're going to do this same operation a whole lot. Like you can see, if I changed all of these numbers, right? Suppose it took four minutes instead of five to get to this temperature. Or suppose I was going to some other number related to some other kind of scenario you're still going to more or less go through this same set of operations. You will almost always have a fraction in here that you're doing log of, whatever. So you might as well get good at it. That's my suggestion. Yeah. Do you mean to find the ambient Say it again. Do you mean to find the ambient temperature? I don't know if I've seen being asked to find the ambient temperature, but if you think about it, if I have enough other information, there's no reason why I can't. I'll come back to that point later on. All right, now, um, why did we bother finding K? What was the point? What was the actual question? This is the real question, right? But I'm going to use that particular value K to now solve for this when this is capital T. Okay? So again, I'm going to go back to my original equation. I think I just left space here. And I'm going to say, well, 25 represents capital T. And I've got the rest of the equation here. Now, because of the way that k is, it's this gross awkward number, I'm actually not going to write the value of k, even though I know what k is, okay? Because I'm just going to have to write uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 symbols over and over again, the same 6 symbols over and over again, all the way until the last line, and then it's just going to be calculated all the way. doesn't really help me to write this down each time. I might as well just put it in when I'm actually solving the thing. So I'm going to suggest, just as a pragmatic point, just leave it as k. You know what it is, it will come into play later. Let me just do the rearrangement, okay? So I'm going to take away that from both sides. I'm going to divide by this. I'm going to take logs of both sides, and then I'm going to make t the subject, okay? Now at this point, now I'm actually ready to write it down because I'm preparing to punch it into a calculator. Okay? So you can see that division by minus sign over there, I'm going to write log 16 up the top. And then I'm also dividing by this k business, so that's going to be on the denominator, 5th log 8 on 5. Okay? Writing LN is um, a handy thing because number one, it's faster, and number two, it's a reminder for you in your calculator not to punch the LOG button, to, but to press, press the LN button because that's an easy thing to forget. This now is going to give me a number. Has someone got it? Can I have a couple of decimal places maybe? Say it again. 29.50 dot 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 dot. Oh, it's 49. It's 49 and some other stuff which rounds up, doesn't it? Okay. So, this is my time. 29 and a half, what units? What units are they? Minutes. Minutes. Does that seem reasonable? It took five minutes to drop 30 degrees in temperature. I'm trying to drop another 45 degrees. Does it stand to reason that it takes almost half an hour for that to happen? And I think it does, because think about this, right? You always got to do a sense check, right? 25 degrees. Is that close or far from our ambient temperature? Close or far? I'd say it's pretty close, right? And the closer you get to your ambient temperature, or ambient whatever, the slower it goes. That's the way exponential decay goes. It slows right down. So it's going to take a long time to move those last few degrees. Does that make sense? 